In this video we're going to illustrate the relationship between Gibbs energy and work by working out a numerical example. Uh, in the example we're going to be ingesting 4 grams of sucrose, sucrose which is the equivalent of uh, about a couple of uh, sugar cubes and then uh, that uh, sucrose is going to be metabolized in our cells to generate energy and we're going to get that energy uh, and then uh, do work against gravity by just jumping. Right, so the question is, well, how high? Uh, what is the maximum uh, height you can reach after eating two uh, sugar cubes or four grams of sucrose? Right, so the process is one in which, again, we, 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 what we're going to do is just uh, metabolize uh, sucrose, which is this substance, uh, yeah, all 11, it's a solid, and then we're going to burn it with oxygen in our cells to generate uh, CO2 and then water. It's going to be a couple of approximations in our calculations and that is that we're going to assume that our body is working at 298 Kelvin and that's a little bit lower than where it normally works which is 310 Kelvin and the second approximation is that uh, the pressures are going to be a one bar. Okay so uh, uh, that's fine. Uh, the reason that we actually want to do that is because under those conditions we can use data, standard data in tables which is provided at 288 Kelvin and that makes the problem much simpler. Okay, at the heart of the problem though is the connection between the Gibbs energy and work and that connection is provided by this equation which is that uh, the change in Gibbs energy is equal to the maximum non-expansion work that you can get out of a process. Uh, notice that a work against gravity is uh, a non-expansion work if it's done by flexing muscles. Okay, in that flex of muscles there's no expansion so then uh, that work against gravity will be non-expansion work. Okay, so uh, the, the strategy is then pretty obvious. We simply have to calculate the change in Gibbs energy from burning uh, the four grams of sucrose and then that will be the maximum uh, work against gravity that we can do from jumping. All right, so how do we do that? Well, uh, this is a chemical reaction and that means that our uh, Gibbs energy will be the Gibbs energy of the reaction. Uh, notice that again we're working under standard conditions, so that is the assumption. Uh, and usually we have uh, molar uh, data in tables, so what we're going to calculate first is, is the reaction Gibbs energy under standard conditions uh, per mole. And that, uh, that will be at 298 Kelvin because that's where data uh, are given. Okay, so this is equal to uh, the enthalpy, molar enthalpy of the reaction, at standard, standard conditions minus the temperature, and then a change in entropy in the reaction under standard conditions. Uh, how to calculate these uh, two values? Well, uh, we actually have done that uh, in prior illustrations, right? I've noticed that for the calculation of the reaction uh, enthalpy, what you would do is just take the enthalpies of products multiplied by enthalpies of formation of products multiplied by their stigmatic coefficient, subtract the enthalpies uh, of formation of reagents, that will be zero by definition, so the enthalpy of formation of sucrose, um, and then that will be uh, the reaction enthalpy. And that value we actually know, this value is minus uh, 5644 kilojoules per mole. So this reaction is heavily exothermic. All right, uh, for the change in entropy, this is something that we also have illustrated in prior uh, examples. What you would do is just take the absolute molar entropies for products multiplied by the stoichiometric coefficients and then subtract the absolute molar ent entropies for uh, reagents okay, multiplied by the stoichiometric coefficients which are 12 and 1. But remember that in the case of oxygen uh, uh, you have a non-zero value because this is an absolute molar entropy is not the enthalpy of formation. Okay, so, uh, and this happens to be uh, plus 511.9 joules per mole Kelvin. Okay, so what we have to do is just get these values uh, together and then uh, obtain what we want here. Uh, there's a couple of issues there. The temperature is 298 Kelvin and uh, actually the only issue that you have here is that to recognize that here you have joules per mole Kelvin and here you have kilojoules per mole, right? So uh, you choose how you want to make these units match. Uh, the one that I would prefer would be to change that into kilojoules per mole Kelvin. Okay, and what, uh, but after you do that, uh, what you're going to get out of this is that, um, and this is a value of minus 5.80, 10 to the 3 kilojoules per mole. 
Okay, something interesting happens here. Notice that this value is related to work. So what you're seeing from this calculation is that uh, the amount, the maximum ener amount of energy that you can extract as work here is going to be given by the exothermicity of the reaction, but in this case the reaction is also generating entropy. Okay, the, the entropy is actually growing. So that adds uh, uh, some more uh, energy to, uh, to obtain a much larger or a significant, significantly larger amount of uh, energy that can be extracted as work uh, than that coming from the reaction exothermicity, which is only uh, 5,600 uh, kilojoules per mole. Okay, so in this case, again, entropy plays in our favor because this uh, reaction is entropic, it's entropy generating. You're going to be able to extract uh, a more amount of energy and uh, as work in principle than uh, if this reaction was not disordering uh, uh, the system. Okay, great. So uh, let's continue then with the problem. What we've done here is uh, simply to calculate what um, uh, the molar reaction gives energy is, but of course we don't have one mole, we instead have only four grams. Okay, so let's see if we can, uh, if we can uh, do the transformation of an intensive qu uh, quantity to an extensive quantity which is uh, uh, for the four grams, right? So uh, delta G will be simply the number of moles that you have multiplied by delta RGM standard. Okay, so uh, the number of moles is the four grams of sucrose divided by uh, the molar mass, which is 342.3 grams per mole, multiplied by minus 5.80, 10 to the 3 kilojoules per mole. Okay, and this returns a value that is going to be much smaller than this because you have much less than one mole. Okay, and that value uh, happens to be minus 67.8 kilojoules. All right, so that is the, uh, the amount of energy as work that you can extract from the reaction. Okay, so we extract that work, and then uh, we're gonna assume a 100% uh, uh, transformation into gravitational or work against gravity. So that means that uh, uh, we're gonna change the sign of that, right? So this is a negative value, because this is uh, uh, work that uh, the system, the chemical reaction, uh, is doing in the surroundings, okay? But when we reinterpret that as, uh, as, as uh, gra work against gravity, that is going to be a positive number. Okay, so we change that simply to 16.8 kilojoules, and I guess now this is the work against gravity. It's not the work that you're extracting from the reaction, which is negative, but the work against gravity that you can do. And uh, this is simply going to be equal to MDH. Okay, where IH is the uh, uh, height that you can get. There's something actually that is quite important here. Okay, and uh, let me uh, uh, delve a little deeper into these numbers. Notice that the relationship between Gibbs energy and work is um, maximum non-expansion work. Okay, so this would be the maximum possible gravitational work you could do. In reality, uh, uh, processes are not 100% efficient. Right? So what that means is that uh, more than likely you won't be able to extract all of this work. Right, so this really only provides an upper, uh, a useful upper limit for the maximum work that you could extract. Again, in reality, no process is 100% efficient. So what you will be able to extract from the four grams of sucrose that you have in yesterday is actually less than that. Okay, but still, uh, uh, this problem provides, again, a useful upper limit of efficiency. Okay, so we simply have to solve here for the height, okay, which will be your uh, uh, work max. Okay, so this will be the maximum height, H max, divided over mg. Okay, where mass, we, you can assume here whatever mass uh, you want, and I'm going to assume 65 kilograms for a regular human. Okay, and when you do that, this number turns out to be 106 meters, which is a lot. That's about 300 feet. Okay, so uh, a couple of things to wrap up this problem. First, notice that the amount of energy stored in sucrose is huge. Just from four grams, you can propel a human uh, 106 meters, or from about 300 feet, up in the air. Okay, that's a lot of energy for just four grams of, of a substance. Okay, uh, the second thing that is important is that obviously that is just going to be uh, the upper limit for height, right? Again, in reality, you so, sort of need some mechanism to, to transfer that energy, right? So you have, you're gonna have some muscles to contract, and so forth, and none of these processors are going to be 100% efficiency, right? So in, in reality, uh, the amount of, the height that you're going to be re reaching from that 
uh, uh, sugar intake is going to be less than this, and it's going to depend on the individual and how you do you, how do you design that process. Okay, so this only provides again uh, uh, a useful upper limit for uh, a deficiency of this process.